the uh, Handy Search ground penetrating radar system is a small miniaturized ground penetrating radar system with a 1 gigahertz antenna. Basically the theory behind ground penetrating radar is that you have a radio transmitter in the front and a radio receiver in the back. By wheeling a, the uh, probe over the concrete surface the radio waves are transmitted into the concrete and then reflected back from dissimilar materials. Now those materials can be anything from metallic to plastic to air to water however in the case of concrete the best reflections that you'll ever get are from metal. One of the first things that needs to be realized is that the compact flash which is stored in here needs to be inserted before the power up especially when you've selected compact flash as your storage output method. To begin scanning the first thing you do is you switch it on. The power, main power switch is on the back here. By pushing it into the up position it's now on. Once it switches on the screen will start to come to life first with the cursor then with the name of the unit and the version of the firmware. The next page that you come to is now the scanning uh, page. And from this point in time you are actually ready to start scanning if you, if you wish. To begin setting the, set, the settings, you press the set button. This then moves you into a menu here. To toggle through the menu, we use the up and down button when we find some, an option that we want to change we then move into it and then toggle the options up and down. So let's begin with the settings. The first setting is the color. You can either have the colors set to a color or a monochrome black and white image. Generally the color image is a lot clearer. The second option that we can have is the displacement direction. And now what that does is that in the normal orientation the menu is up this way, in the inverted orientation it's up the other way. So if I was to scan with my left hand I would still have the screen up the correct orientation. Let's move back to the normal orientation. The next option is the display mode. You have two display modes. The first mode is B and that is basically a B scan which is just a, almost a snapshot through the concrete. If I then select the B A scan I have the B scan as well as the A scan. The A scan being the uh, trace of each of the pulses as, it go, as the uh, radio waves go down into the concrete and then come back up. Generally we'll keep it on B just because it keeps the screen less cluttered although B A can be quite helpful especially when you're having a little trouble finding uh, your targets. The amplitude gives you two options for how the color scheme is going to be run. You've got absolute and offset. Generally the absolute looks a lot less cluttered on the screen so we recommend that you leave it on absolute. The next point is the x-axis. Now with ground penetrating radar the equipment is actually just timing how long the pulse takes to go down and to come back up so you can display the information as a as a raw time signal or if you know what the velocity of the con of the radio wave in the concrete is then you can convert this to dis to distance and this is probably the most useful measurement to have the next step is the depth now what this is, is this is a setting for the velocity of the radio waves through the concrete. This is how the machine converts the time information into a distance from the last setting. Generally with concrete we want this setting to be set at 8. Although you can change this setting if you have information on exact depths of targets. The next option is fairly obvious. This is where you can set the date and time which will be stamped with the file that you store. The file number is the next option after that. This is just a three digit sequential number 
and it just increases as you store more and more data onto the flash drive. We'll talk about the flash drive later. This next point is the distance adjustment. Obviously you can see that the wheels on the handy search are rubber. Once they become worn, the unit then needs to have an adjustment for the displacement or the amount of distance that it travels. Generally you won't need to adjust this. The next option is output. There are three options for output. The first one is a CF bin, which is a compact flash binary file. The next option after that is the compact flash text file. And then there's the printing option. We'll generally leave the output on compact flash binary. The next one is the display range. This has three options also. There is D, S, and N. D stands for a deep display, down to about 30 centimeters. S stands for shallow display, down to about 10 centimeters. And N is a normal display, down to about 20 centimeters. You're really going to have to have a look at the application that you're looking at, whether you need to look down to, 30 cent to the full 30 centimeters, or whether 10 centimeters is enough. We're going to leave it on D. The next point is fairly obvious. This is the language in English. And the last point is not actually a point at all. It, you can't change this option. To get out of this menu, you then press the set button again and you're ready to scan. This is the normal scanning screen. A lot of the information is fairly obvious, but let's run through it. Up in the top right hand corner, we have a battery. At this point in time, we would say the battery is about 75% full. In the bottom left hand corner, we have the gain setting. This is basically the amplification from the different levels in the concrete. On this we have six different options. We have six options for the shallow setting and six options for the deep setting. And then in this point here we have some processing. We'll talk about that later. Although, in most cases, you won't need to do this unless scanning on tiles or have, when you're having a little bit of trouble finding the depth of a target. Let's move across and start scanning, shall we? To begin scanning, we hit the Start button. Generally, we want to hold on to the Scan button, and that's, this will give us 15 meters of continuous scanning. I then roll the unit across. And as you can see, each of these yellow points here, showing at the top of the screen, are our reinforcing. We can then locate them by using the dashed lines corresponding to the center of the probe. I've now let go of the start button and it's beeped twice. That is now a stored image and we can see that the image will not move when I roll, the, roll it around. If I wanted to store this image, I now press the output button. It then saves it onto the compact flash, which can be found in here. On this screen, we've completed a scan. Each of the yellow points, or hyperbola, as they're called by geophysicists, are the reinforcing. The actual position of the reinforcing is dead in the center where the yellow point is. If we go down on the y-axis, we can see that the depth of the reinforcing is somewhere about 4 centimeters or 40 millimeters. We then have the, depth, the distance of travel along the top. So we can see here again that the distance between the reinforcing in this case is about 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. What is also interesting 
is that we have this blue line across the bottom. Now on a suspended slab where we have air underneath the slab, the bottom of the slab is usually visual, uh, able to be visualized. And we can see that in this case the slab is around 22 centimeters or 220 millimeters. If we then want to go and take a look at the scans that we've collected onto our compact flash, we press the CF button. This then moves us into a menu where we have a time log of each of the files that we've collected and then also a little thumbnail image just to remind ourselves of what the image actually looked like. When we want to move out of this, we press the CF button again and we're ready to start scanning again. There's no need to, s to clear the screen once we're finished. We can just then press the start button again. Using these buttons here, we can now move a cursor around the screen and get accurate positions. Let's have a look at this one. We want to get an accurate position for this reinforcing here. By pressing the right arrow, we are now getting the distance that, of travel and then once we press the down we can see that a line is now coming down to the depth of the reinforcing. Once we've accurately located the reinforcing with the cross arrows we can now see the X and Y coordinates for this. And in this situation we can see that the depth of cover for the reinforcing is 3.3 centimeters or 33 millimeters. Now we're going to show you how to collect a 3D image. On the floor we've laid a, a piece of, of paper with a square 600 by 600 millimeters. We then have vertical and horizontal lines at every 100 millimeters and then other lines of every 50 millimeters depending on what, which resolution you want to do. We're now going to scan along each of the lines in the horizontal and vertical directions and then create the 3D image. To begin, we line the front of the probe up with the first line, and then using the yellow marker here, we line it up over the center of the line. To begin, we press start, it beeps once, and then we wheel it across the surface all the way to the end. And you'll note that it has automatically stopped the scan at 600 mils. We then press the output button and it's now stored to the flash drive. To begin forming the image, we select the file menu and the first option, read to slice data. This opens up an open file data. We then select exactly where we want our information from. In this case, we're taking it straight off the compact flash and the data. We select the first file and press open. This then gives us the option of how many files we want to go into our slice. In this case, we've collected 14 files. Seven in the vertical direction, seven in the horizontal direction. And between each of the scans, we've got a 10 centimeter interval. We then press read. It then takes a little minute as it processes the data. This is now the image that we've formed. Here we have a, an image through the entire depth of the slab and then here we have an indication of what depth each of the targets is at. They are each color coded and you can see across here to see exactly what depth they are. So for the green we have a depth of around 40 to 41 millimeters. Over here we have the option of changing the velocity that we've used to calculate the depths. Generally again we want to keep this on around about 8 and then we have the option to look at different depths. Now, as you can see here that on this depth range from 20 to 30 centimeters there are no targets. All of the targets appear in a much shallower depth. We then also over here have the contrast and this basically focuses 
on the white areas of the scan. Don't put the contrast up too high.